I know think that uh, everything is in very good profit. Mm. Sometimes we have losses and also we won't have much time for our loved ones. Hi, my name is Zoe. If you're new to the channel, welcome. And in this channel, I speak with guests and we share perspectives and our insights into things that really matter. If this is what you're looking for, do consider subscribing. And in today's video, Cassandra, the second gen owner of Kia Huat Fruit Shop, shares the untold struggles of the business. Now coming up next. The shop has started since 1991, over 30 years. Yeah. Uh, how did... Uh, let's let's rewind back to the beginning. Do you recall like how did you all uh, build the brand at the very beginning or your parents? Because uh, right now, like you're saying, the business is really very good before COVID, while people will come. Mm. So the brand name is actually very... Uh, everyone knows. So before that, how did you all build, build up the name of Kia Huat? Mm, I think we are... Because we are there for so long and... Uh, what really that uh this up make make us like like people know us is because yeah. we we give uh friendly friendly kind of uh how 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 would I put it maybe our service we, we give friendly uh -huh. service yeah and we 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 don't recommend. help uh, we recommend good fruits and we don't sell very high price yeah mm, okay okay yeah. so uh then. Year after year, they will bring customers yeah, and things yeah. like that. Okay. Yeah. So how, so how long did it take your parents to build that name up? Like how many years roughly you remember? To uh, that one I really don't know <laughs> because when when my parents started the business, I was only like ten or eleven. That, okay. Yeah, okay. So I don't know. Yeah. But by the time you're fifteen already, the business was doing yeah, yeah. very well. Uh, so yes. I, about five about five ish years uh, that your parents really yeah. put in the effort. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So how how is it uh, uh you know in a in in selling fruits in this mm. fruits industry what mm. are some struggles that people uh may not know that maybe you want to share you know like those who want to really start a business maybe in this fruits industry you know they say oh not bad I said a fruit store <laughs> just get fruits you know you know some people already there what are some struggles that you I know? I think um. If you want to start a business, we need to be very we need to be persevere and have faith la, in what we are doing. Mm. Yeah, we have to be very uh, we have to be passionate and very hardworking. Yeah, during the startup period also. Mm. Yeah, so I have to possess the never give up spirit when we encounter setbacks. Mm. Yeah. What are some setbacks that you that maybe in the fruits business? Uh, sometimes. You might not think that uh, everything is in very good profit one. Mm. Yeah. Sometimes we have losses also. So sure, sure. yeah, so we really have to uh be determined in this lah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so it must have a so, backup plan. Yeah, correct. And also we won't have much time for our loved ones. Oh. So yeah. So mental preparation is needed also lah. Yeah. yeah. True, true. Mm. So and and fruits are very um actually very dependent on weather dependent yes, on the correct. country. So how uh how, how do you overcome all this? You know suddenly you know the prices go up, you know or because there's a shortage somewhere or maybe yeah. You know. So how Which do you deal? Okay, for fruits rice right from different country to different sizes to different uh, uh season the price varies a lot one so yes yes, yes. We, we, will, we will tell our customer that now is not in the season so everything will will, will be expensive but when mm. when come to season right mm. then the fruits will be very very cheap but then we will sell cheaper to 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 customers also la. so they, they earn it by the time la, yeah ah okay okay yeah. so you don't you uh you don't buy you don't tell the supplier okay i want to buy this now you look at the season first and then you tell them like in that sense right or how do no, you go no. about doing it? No, uh, we, we take from suppliers and the, the season, the, the in-season fruits, we will know that uh, whether it's, oh. it's now is in-season. So we will take from right, suppliers right, right. and we will know that if not in-season fruits, eventually it will become, uh, the, the price will be very high also. La. Yes, so we yes. understand this. La. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. Wow, so so there uh so whatever, you already know ahead la, because yeah. of so many years of experience. Yeah, yeah, season. correct. So, uh, for this point, I mean, this is just also uh, jumping off to another point. Do you see a climate change causing fruits quality? Yeah. 
Okay. Yeah. So, so, so maybe you can tell us more because 30 years is a long, a long, a long <laughs> time for us. You know, it's very good to tap on your uh, experience. So yeah. what, what is the main thing that you all really see? Okay, when climate change, right, the fruits will, uh, it will spoil easily. Oh, okay. Yeah, it will spoil easily and then there will be a lot of losses. Okay, yeah, and okay. because, uh, like, like, let's say we take watermelon, right? Yeah. Usually when, when our supplier come, comes in the stock, we can keep for maybe one week or two. Mm. But when the climate change, in, in raining season, then the, the watermelon will like, can, can last for three days or so. The inside, mm -hmm. the, the watermelon inside will be like soggy and not crunchy kind of, of texture, you see. Right, 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 right. Yeah. So these are the losses also. Yeah, okay. so, so that means uh, as compared to 30 years ago, the fruits nowadays spoil faster. Uh, we, we can put it in this way. And also it's because that uh, a lot of fruits from different, different countries. So mm. they actually, they mix mix with their how do how do you say they mix the breed and then you know oh yeah so okay. like the, the fruits is not like last time so natural kind yeah yes, all is yes. mixed already yeah 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 so I, actually i can i can sense that you know when you are doing the fruits business it's also like um taking a risk because when you order you also don't know what the quality is like until it arrives uh usually we will we will get uh from supplier we will ensure we will want them I to see. ensure us with, with food quality so on yeah of course true, there true. there are sometimes sometimes they are not not so good quality but we will reject lah yeah, or okay, we don't yeah. give to our customers also yeah okay so so from what i hear it's also like uh, how your parents have started also like the belief that to supply the best to your customers yes. is still something that cassandra you still believe in uh. it's yes. something that motivates you yeah, yeah correct yeah, yeah. Yeah, because also on social media, I have a few friends, I have quite a number of friends who follow uh, Kiahua. That's how I got to know uh, oh. Yeah, and they are like uh, saying praises about the fruits. And, and oh, that's why okay. I was, Thank yeah, you. I was pleasantly surprised when actually Chloe replied me. I'm like, oh, yeah, <laughs> really, uh, yeah thank you for the opportunity. Yeah, but I must yeah. tell you, you're doing a great job like, because there are people uh, in a, in a, friends around us who are really very appreciative of the quality that you all are yeah. insisting. Uh, yeah, yeah, correct. This is what case. we are looking for. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So are there and uh moving forward, what are the plans that you have for uh Kiahuat? Uh 